Well, I can't wait to hear the Star Wars fans reaction after this one because God, it's going to be fun hearing these reviews. Mandalorian Season 3 follows Mando and the Mandalorians going back to Mandalore and taking their home back. You know me in Star Wars. I'm a big fan of Star Wars. I love Star Wars. Star Wars is the reason that this channel is here. And yeah. He watches it when he's homesick with the flu. He watches it on rainy Sunday afternoons in the fall. He, he watches it on Christmas Eve. Ted watches Star Wars in sickness and in health, in good times and in bad. So my thoughts on season three of Mandalorian. Well, at least it's not as bad as Rise of Skywalker. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Okay, there are good things and bad things about this season. Let's start with the good. The best episodes of this season's episode 5 and episode 7. Those are the best episodes because they are the most momentum building episodes. I also like what they did with Grogu this season. They took Grogu a step further, the Mandalorian a step further, and then they reversed those steps and it's like, oh. But I will give this series this. Special effects are still stunning. There's a scene with a certain cameo shows up and I'm like, oh my god, the effects look stunning. The dog fights are really good. The shootouts are really good. The acting is really top notch. They, they just bring their end game to this, but I feel like the main problem with this season is that nothing happens. Things push progress and then they reverse those things. And I feel like that's due to the fact that Kathleen Kennedy was literally dipping her fingers all over the show and not letting these creators have their free will, essentially. And that's the main thing that bogged down the show. You can tell that Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni did not have a hand in this show. They were there, they were doing everything, but you can tell that Kathleen was constantly on set and bogging down the show just because of one episode alone that features Lizzo and Jack Black singing show tunes, I kid you not, like why? They got you outnumbered 10 to 1. Yeah, best Star Wars show ever, huh? Good God. Does, does Clone Wars not exist? Does Clone Wars not exist? Yeah, this season was very, very disappointing for me. Um, I feel like that Kathleen Kennedy definitely overstepped her bounds this season because Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau they always put out golden things they got the Clone Wars the Bad Batch Iron Man anything Star Wars that they touch turns to gold and they know what the fans want and it just sucks that obviously there was studio interference on this season and it breaks my heart and once again, there are really great things in this season. There are great cameos. It's great to see Moff Gideon back. Episode 3 is a great Coruscant-centric episode. The effects are still spectacular. Even better than Marvel effects. Like, these, this show has better effects than Marvel. That's telling you something. Like, you can see the passions behind the show, but the problem is creative differences going on behind the scenes that halt the show. And I feel bad, honestly, and it sucks that this is happening. And overall, this season of Mandalorian was really disappointing for me. Even the finale, the finale felt rushed. It felt like a Marvel TV finale. It's like, you know, they're trying to just wrap it up and be done with it because of what's going on behind the scenes. They're tired of the dramas and yeah, sure, I'm upset because of the Mandalorian. Star Wars will always be special to me because it's that thing you latched onto. 
I grew up watching it. Watching it for the first time when I was that kid made me who I am today. Without that, there would be no Michael Tube. Heck, I just saw Return of the Jedi the other night. This was my reaction coming out of it. Okay, we just got out of watching Return of the Jedi out of the theater, and oh my god, this experience... It's Return of the Jedi. It's a classic, man. I absolutely love that movie. Like, seeing that on the big screen brought genuine joy to me. Like, what? what's your reaction? It was fantastic. Like, I haven't felt this happy watching a movie in a long time, and... Like, there's been great movies that are out, but Star Wars Return of the Jedi, I've seen it many, many times, and seeing it on the big screen was awesome. It was fantastic. It was amazing. It, Star Wars will always be constant. Star Wars, Star Wars was always there in the worst times and the best times for me. Star Wars helped me get through a lot of things and taught me a lot of things because of its stories and characters, the characters you relate to and get attached to. The stories help you escape the real world and teaches you things like how to get over death and let go of someone and how to say goodbye. And it's the characters you fall in love with. You get attached to them and it's just something you love because it's the world, it's the characters. I will always enjoy Star Wars because of the stories, the characters, the story of break, the story of loss, the story of redemption. It's the stories, and yeah, The Mandalorian Season 3 is very, very disappointing, but Star Wars will have its bad days, but it'll always have its good days, too. Original trilogy, The Clone Wars, Rebels, the prequels, they will always be there and always remain constant. Overall, I'm going to give this season of Mandalorian a C+. Yeah, I'm really bummed out about this season. Would have thought that the best Star Wars thing this year would have been the Bad Batch so far. I'm excited for Ahsoka. Fingers crossed for Ahsoka. I heard Dave Filoni has free creative reign over Ahsoka, but hi ay ay. But yeah, I hope you guys have a happy May the 4th. Punch out like button face like boss. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.